For years, Ubisoft hasn't had a very good reputation for innovating their game design of their primary IPs. While the publisher has released some notable games, in the last generation they've become far more successful at making mediocre titles that fail to spark interest with their target audiences. From Assassin's Creed to Watch Dogs, games with interesting concepts are washed up by typical open world tropes and bugs that have become staples of Ubisoft games. Never has this been more the case than with Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which, admitted by Ubisoft themselves, was a complete and utter failure. And while I don't think this is really much of a surprise to many people, certainly not me, it's another example of a AAA Ubisoft game getting bogged down by negative reviews and poor fan reaction right upon release. For me, this started with the marketing, which is by far still the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Everything from the horrid live action trailers that saw John Benthrill transitioning from a soldier to a school shooter, to the I am an elite soldier monologuing in the trailers. I am a ghost. An elite soldier. Now that's edgy as fuck! To bad guys in paintball masks and fucking Jedi robes, there wasn't much to get excited about except how bad this game was gonna bomb. What are you doing? You're a ghost! On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. Even as I held out a bit of hope that the gameplay could still be significant, the E3 demos just seemed floaty and uninspired. I had already lost interest by the time the alpha came out, which to no one's surprise was a buggy mess. If the gameplay demos didn't already show that there wasn't much differentiation between Breakpoint and the lukewarm Wildlands, the alpha certainly failed to prove otherwise. After playing this game for about 40 hours or so, I can confidently say the negative reviews and lacking sales are completely deserved. Breakpoint, for all its graphical merits, is just another lackluster Far Cry clone with no personality. It doesn't have any qualities that help it stand out, and the aspects that it does handle confidently are done exceedingly better in other games. Well, even though I expected this to be the case, I wanted to experience the game for myself. So I justified it by committing to Uplay Plus for one month, and following that, what I witnessed was such a steep nosedive in terms of quality and direction that the realization of how out of touch Ubisoft had become with Ghost Recon's original identity finally hit me. Ghost Recon was never a bloated open world game with bullet sponge enemies, outposts, weapon leveling stats, in-game economies, and hub areas. From their earliest conception, it was a proper tactical shooter, and Ubisoft has left that knowledge at the door to reinvent a franchise with more marketable attributes that cater to a wider sphere of consumers, but by doing that, they've only succeeded at making a game that nobody wants to play. To understand Breakpoint's adverse differentiation, you have to first take into account the direction the series as a whole had begun steering after Ghost Recon was initially released in 2001. All throughout the 2000s, the Ghost Recon franchise was symbolic in how it helped pioneer the tactical shooter into the mainstream. It was critically praised for melding intense difficulty with authentic gameplay with each iteration. With the exception of its brother franchise, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, there was no other tactical shooter at the time of its prominence that had the same sort of commercial success either. The mainline Ghost Recon games sold quite well throughout the 2000s, with each game garnering more success in sales than the last. This was in large part due to how games after the first Ghost Recon took on a much more linear structure. With Ghost Recon 2, levels were still open, but the gameplay prioritized tense firefights that weren't broken up by as much micromanagement. This wasn't necessarily a bad thing, and it proved to be a wise decision, as when Ghost Recon 2 released for the original Xbox, it had sold remarkably better than its predecessor. This success would influence the design of the advanced Warfighter games that would go on to build upon the fluidity of Ghost Recon 2. Both Warfighter 1 and 2 saw to be great successes, both becoming platinum hits on the 360. Then, Ghost Recon's success began to slow down in 2012. The franchise changed dramatically with the release of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier. With Future Soldier, gone were the squad tactics, one-shot kills, and open levels that were prominent in past games. In their place was an extremely linear, cover-based third-person shooter with an emphasis on second-to-second -second action. Future Soldier received mediocre reception and failed at providing the combination of action and realism that the previous mainline games balanced exceptionally, focusing much more on the former. It didn't help that it was released in a market that was already saturated with generic military shooters. Future Soldier is arguably to blame for breaking the franchise as its poor sales resulted in Ubisoft putting the franchise in a deep freeze in order to reassess its strengths and weaknesses. This cultivated in 2017's Ghost Recon Wildlands, which attempted to incorporate tactical gameplay into an open world. Wildlands was an interesting concept and managed to sell better than predicted by Ubisoft, 
However, it lacked much of what previous games were built on. Common complaints were that animations were floaty, gunplay was underwhelming, and character and vehicle input was null. Overall, it was criticized for failing to retain the same quality the series had been known for prior to the 8th console generation. Despite this, it was still a success for Ubisoft and it didn't kill their hope that they could build on the game's strengths and make something vastly superior in a follow-up release. This year, Ghost Recon Breakpoint was supposed to remedy many of the things players took issue with in Wildlands and improve on the overall experience. But if anything, it has only succeeded in further alienating any fans of previous Ghost Recon titles still holding out hope that the series will return to the direction it once followed. So, let's look at how it does that. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is the 11th Ghost Recon game in the franchise and continues in the same continuity as Wildlands. You play as your own customized ghost soldier, Nomad, which Ubisoft didn't even have the decency to ask my permission for, and you're a part of a ghost platoon that is sent to an island in the South Pacific called Aurora. Aurora is basically owned by a tech conglomerate and is what I imagine Silicon Valley would look like if it was its own nation state. A private military company called The Wolves, led by the one and only Netflix Punisher, <laughs> whom formerly was a ghost, has taken over the island and hijacked its weaponized drones. Your platoon's helicopter ends up getting shot down upon approach, and everyone ends up dying in the crash or catching a bullet by the wolf pack, except for you. After narrowly escaping, you go on to link up with the people that are also trapped on the island with you, while you try to get an idea of what the hell is going on. This sets up the hub world that introduces you to a plethora of supporting characters that stage various guerrilla missions for you to carry out against the wolves and the drones on the island all while you try to put together the pieces of Johnny Boy's betrayal and attempt an escape. Oops. <laughs> the main story is made convoluted by a visible disinterest in developing the main conflict introduced in the first act, and instead it focuses on underwhelming subplots that give the player objectives until the story feels like moving on again. As a result, it's hard to fully care about what in the hell is actually going on. Breakpoint gets off to a rocky start as it fails at gripping you into the drama of its open world in the opening hours. And even when you begin to understand the various factions at play many hours later, your character is never given much purpose to make you considerate of what is happening around you. Something that doesn't help alleviate this problem is how none of the characters are very interesting, including your own. Maybe burn thralls, but he really needed some more screen time in order to become a better antagonist. Besides that, every supporting character in the main plot feels like an accessory to furthering your goals of taking on burn thralls character. When the vast majority of cutscenes and dialogue with supporting characters are to give you tasks, your role in the story starts to feel diminished. Both of these things can summarize what makes Breakpoint's story feel like a disappointing experience. In all other Ghost Recon games, the narrative did take a back seat, and admittedly they were a bit cheesy at times. What is your name, Captain? I have no name, Colonel. I'm a ghost. <laughs> and I was never here. Understood, Senor. <laughs> ghost. But it was always consistently focused and serviceable in giving a convincing reason behind what the player was doing. It never had an effect that hampered the gameplay, and in some small ways the gameplay was actually greatly enhanced by it. But in Breakpoint, you're hardly given any incentive to care about what you're doing outside maybe the opening and closing missions. Because what serves as filler for the entire game is just setups for missions that are as by the number as you could possibly get from a Ubisoft game. The conflict with Burnthrall's character, Lieutenant Colonel Walker, and the company responsible for taking over the island is told primarily through these supporting characters with motivations that exist just to set up missions. Despite a couple of flashback sequences, the game never takes the time to reinforce your own character's role or motivation, and most of what you end up doing makes you feel like you're just an errand boy, hardly giving you much of a reason to look at the island of Aurora as more than just another sandbox with waypoints rather than a world that's actually lived in. This stuff winds up hurting the gameplay for me, as I feel like I'm always subconsciously more aware of the circumstances of my objectives in an open world game like this, and when those circumstances are barely compelling, I end up losing a lot of motivation to take on a mission other than for the sake of progressing the story in hopes of something more rewarding. If you weren't constantly trying to move the plot forward by going somewhere to speak to some scientist or tech person to help you do something you can't do on your own because you're a dumb monkey soldier man, I might have different feelings about the story. But when the main game feels overwhelmingly like a chore, the glaring flaws in the plot stick out like a sore thumb. It feels like Ubisoft couldn't flesh out the central story because shooting motion capture with the Punisher was getting too expensive. 
And well, they needed to find a way to add length to the main story, so they did what they do best, and they reprinted the same doll formula for side plots and fetch quests that they already use in all their other open world games. There's a tech lab where the security team servers are located, and you'd better destroy the servers too so no one can complete their work. Got it. To a certain point, I can overlook a terrible story in a game like this, but it hurts to see how obviously mishandled the direction of the story is in a game that has fucking Tom Clancy in the title. For me, what was a little bit of fecal icing on top of this dump of a storyline had to be how dull the subject matter was handled. The game tries to sprinkle a little bit of commentary about the dangers of unmanned vehicles and their vulnerabilities into its fickle plot, and then there's some crap about loyalty to country and how soldiers are used for the benefits of others, but the game hardly gives these things ground to stand on other than a couple of menacing monologues that hit certain emotional cues. My biggest problem with the story isn't necessarily its direction, but how it feels like a betrayal to the Tom Clancy brand in certain ways. Breakpoint isn't baked in the same themes of believable warfare and espionage that were so strong in previous Tom Clancy games that were made when the man was still kicking. Prior games in the Tom Clancy video game chronology always served as sufficient visualization for the novels that the games were based in. Well, except for a few throwaways. While not every game was necessarily a novel adaptation, I always felt they were presented as if they could exist in the same fiction, which more or less all the first party Tom Clancy games of the 7th generation already were. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory serves as a prelude to Ghost Recon 2, and the Hawks games take place in the skies over Mexico while you play as Scott Mitchell on the ground of the same battle during the events of Advanced Warfighter 2. I don't get the same impression with Breakpoint's premise of a soldier turned traitor antagonist that leads a trench coat wearing army that hijacks an arsenal of weaponized drones. Not only is the story filled with tedious missions that overshadow any interesting conflict that there already is very little of, but the premise on its own feels uninspired especially in the current gaming landscape. It has more similarities with the goofier parts of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare's concept than even future soldiers. And even Advanced Warfare had a bit more novelty in the story it was trying to tell than in this game's. Breakpoint just feels like it wants to be one of those awful Fallen movies with Gerald Butler, rather than a grueling story about the implications of unmanned weapons and soldiers that are trapped behind enemy lines. Even though that's what the trailers were all about. It's a shame that when it came time to implementing these concepts into the game's story, they were lost in translation somehow. Which brings me to how the very same thing happens to the gameplay. All right. What's next? Breakpoint's conception, as far as gameplay stands, is actually rather intriguing to me, which I suppose is the reason for me even attempting it in the first place. You are a soldier stranded behind enemy lines in a vast open world occupied with enemies that are hunting you. You're alone without the ability to call for reinforcements. This idea has huge potential for setting up interesting gameplay scenarios and mechanics, like improvised survival systems, an emphasis on stealth, tactical freedom and how you choose to approach objectives, resource management, to possible limiting factors like how you navigate the open world depending on terrain, weather, etc. And for the most part, these are all things Breakpoint has. But as we go on, you'll see that there is one of two common problems that can be found in the roots of all these systems. Either that they are only very surface level and can practically be ignored, or they are undermined by another system completely. Which leaves the bulk of the game failing to stick out from your standardized open world game with soft RPG elements, outposts, and upgradable inventories. And for this reason, in 2019, I could hardly see much of a reason to pick up a game like this even if I wanted another sandbox shooting game. But what is even more problematic to me is how this game is marketed vaguely as a tactical shooter and how it barely feels like a prototype of one. Breakpoint's biggest betrayal is how it doesn't go all in on what was supposed to be a survival game with tactical gunplay. Instead, it's a barebone open world game by 2019 standards with barebone gimmicks that betray any novelty of Breakpoint's concept. For starters, let's talk about character maintenance. Health and injuries only affect a health bar that is no different than that in the Far Cry games. You have to tend to your injuries via a button prompt which uses a healing item that are by no means scarce before you can regenerate your health. See, this in itself isn't too bothersome, but its simplicity allows for the player to have an unfair advantage over the already moronic enemies and doesn't function any differently than a typical regenerating health bar that encourages aggressive playstyles. 
Something that contributes to this is how your operator doesn't flinch to bullets or get pushed down by explosions. No form of injury has any significant effect on your operator, not even anything aesthetic, like a finger snapping back in a place animation. Breakpoint already runs into a very basic problem that discourages character maintenance, and that is your vulnerability never goes into question outside of how many health bars you can go through before you have to retreat into cover and fill them back up again. This approach to your character's health doesn't encourage advantageous tactics and turns Breakpoint into a run-of-a-mill third-person shooter without an appropriate difficulty spike to get the player to slow down and be considerate of how well equipped they are to handle a task. Even playing on the highest difficulty for all of my playthrough, I never had to do anything more than run away from a gunfight and take cover long enough to regenerate health. Mind you, the game doesn't allow you to do this when you're in alert mode, but still it doesn't change the gameplay loop of shooting and falling back other than adding more time you have to wait to regenerate your health, which only hurts the pacing. More than contributing something that could have added another dynamic to the gameplay. Any repercussion you feel for getting into a fight you shouldn't have is instantaneous and passive. A game with a premise like this, especially one that is a part of a franchise that's appeal is based on its potential for the player to feel dire consequences, you think that there would be some significant outcome for careless play. Listen, I don't need the same complexity of systems in Death Stranding for an open world tactical shooter, but something else to offset this loop would have been good for the direction Breakpoint was trying to go in. Imagine how much of a different dynamic you would have with the world and your enemies if consideration to taking on an outpost wasn't just dependent on your reflexes and health bars. Just throwing this out there, but what if food wasn't a modifier for certain stats and had an effect on your survivability? And instead of adopting a perk system with more stat modifiers, there could be more situational equipment, like vests that help resist shotgun blasts and uniforms and improve your stealth abilities like avoiding drone detection. I'm not saying that would fix the problem, but just that alone would change the dynamic between you and the world and give much needed secondary considerations to the player. This in turn could motivate players to seek out items that would encourage different playstyles instead of increasing a loot level that doesn't have any noticeable impact on gameplay other than blocking out certain missions. Especially when you consider the marketing for Breakpoint, and even the title, it's sort of a slap in the face how shallow this aspect of the game is handled. Even a weight limit for inventory would have been a wise addition, because as it is, the inventory management system that's more or less ripped from the division feels stupidly out of place. I'm not going to begin to imply your character needs to become over encumbered for picking up too many helmets, but as it is, Nomad has an inventory that can basically fit any weapon or clothing you find in it, and since it can be accessed from everywhere, you can change your tactics on the fly, further disconcerting the player of any sort of tactical preparation before venturing out into the open world. This tangled with the fact that enemies lack any interactivity outside of unsilenced kills, silence kills, or closed up melee kills makes the vast variety of weapons feel, well, pointless outside of providing the player with preference. Weapons are plentiful and they can be uniquely customized, but for some reason they have levels that adjust to your characters, meaning that that level 5 M4 you picked up will supposedly be out of fashion when level 6 M4 start appearing. But it's confusing how this actually affects your weapons outside of very tiny stat increases. That level 5 M4 can still be used totally fine throughout the majority of your playthrough without you noticing a huge difference. But a problem arises in this leveling system since all weapons more or less remain just as lethal no matter the enemy type you're shooting at. And the enemy sponge bolts until they die fairly quickly no matter what level your gun is. When you begin to consider how every gun has the capability of instantly killing with headshots, it makes you scratch your head at what the purpose behind weapon leveling is in the first place. I think a better approach to this would have been through upgradable weapons instead. Why not take another page out of Metal Gear Solid 5's playbook and have advancements for your weapons, whether that be attachments or damage or range modifiers, be something that have to be researched and produced in some kind of way. You could slowly turn that stock M4 you found into a killing machine by upgrading its parts by scavenging or crafting them yourself. The more time you spend on improving a weapon, the more customization you could be granted. And that would be really cool. It would be a good incentivizer to scavenge instead of looking for a gear level that was slapped onto it. Now, as redundant as it is, a leveling system in and of itself isn't the worst idea Breakpoint has for its loot. But it makes you feel like the weapons you begin to get an attachment to start to feel redundant after a couple of outings. This wouldn't be a big deal in other games that are built around loot mechanics, but this style of game would have benefited from handling inventory and items in a way that made them feel more personal. It just doesn't translate very well to an open world game of this structure, no less a third person shooter with one foot into a highly lethal damage model for enemies. As you can probably see, this leveling doesn't just apply to the weapons, but the equipment and the class progression. Just like the former, this doesn't feel implemented for any other sake than to give you a sense of progression, as armor and clothing all have stats that hardly affect anything. 
There isn't any noticeable differences in wearing level 1 clothing or level 20 clothing. The only purpose of collecting gear it seems is to boost your gear score, which certain missions require for you to take on. This gives a senseless need to go around and loot for equipment, and it feels like this was done deliberately to lengthen playtime. Now, Breakpoint has only been out a couple of months, and this leveling system has to be the target of most of the criticism. But what I think is more interesting, and well, disappointing to me, is how bivacs were implemented. Bivacs are campsites that allow the player to craft, rearm, and rest, in addition to acting as fast travel points. They are essentially safe houses you'd find in the likes of, well, Far Cry, but with some terrible conditions. Bivacs were one of the few things that I found neat hearing about prior to playing Breakpoint, until I discovered how they would function. Bivacs are at fixed locations in the world that the player has to go to, and without the function of being able to deploy one yourself, it shouldn't be hard to see why bivacs are contrived. Like I said, they're essentially safe houses. Now, safe houses aren't bad at all in their own right, and in games like Far Cry 2 they add an important contrast to the hostile nature of the world, but they are far from being totally safe, and are far more grounded, not only in realism, but into the context of the game by how they afford resources to you. Weapon boxes can be unlocked for you to trade single weapons in that appear at every safe house, but you can only put a single form of weapon in a box. In other words, you have to consider what you'd prefer having convenient access to. As well, safe houses can come under attack, and while you are safe while you stay inside, you can't escape the danger of your enemies without going outside to face them. And sure enough, while I was playing Breakpoint, they evaded my expectations by not only making them resemble the safe houses of Far Cry, but riddling them of the interesting aspects that they had in Far Cry. Instead of feeling like a natural part of the world that provides a temporary safe haven, they are made to feel like nothing more than a menu screen version of the hub world with some restrictions. It gives you access to the weapon and vehicle shops of the hub world and a garage that you can store and spawn vehicles from. I find this unfortunate as it squanders any potential Bivex had to complement the tactical outlook this game was supposed to have for its world. Furthermore, giving the player immediate and mostly unrestricted access to whatever weapons and vehicles they wish for reduces the need to prepare before you go out roaming in the world. And even though I understand considerations have to be given for a game world of this size, having a garage and a gun store at these camps feel like a direct result of Ubisoft catering. And if the fact that you can make these camps in a place of your own choosing wasn't lame enough, they only have this one function, which is convenient access to the gun store and garage. Crafting stat modifiers in the form of food hardly contributes anything that the perk system doesn't already, so all that's left is item crafting and sleeping. This is just another unique idea Breakpoint has that's squandered by its bloated structure. Campsites aside, I do feel like Breakpoint is due some credit for its graphically impressive sandbox. With captivating landscapes filled with detail and plenty of diverse biomes to explore, it's actually amazing how one area of the map feels so different from another. But there really isn't much more to the open world other than its spectacle. Aurora really is just an island with facilities occupied by enemies, and doesn't have the same character as some other notable open world games. The main contributor to this is unfortunately again the lacking gameplay. There isn't much of a reason to go around and explore, except to gather loot marked specifically on your map to almost always add an enemy outpost. So in the first few hours I found myself instinctively taking on these side objectives to gather the weapons I found appealing, but once I understood the depth of the combat and had the weapons I wanted, which was only really one gun, I found the routine of clearing outposts that vary in difficulty stale after about 10 hours or so. I understand there are plenty of side objectives that you can take on throughout the world, but they aren't very engaging and continue the cycle of combat you find even if you just stick to the main questline. No matter how diverse the objective may be, the minute to minute gameplay in the missions feels indistinct from the encounters you have in the world when you're on your own time. It fails to deliver anything refreshing to encourage you to continue the grind, and no form of loot can really change that. Another area I was intrigued about is how Breakpoint handles the stealth aspect of its gameplay, as it's always an important supplementary style of play in a game like this. And I found playing stealthily is actually necessary sometimes. Some bases afford a fair amount of challenge that require you to take a subtle approach, but clearing my way through a base undetected wasn't necessarily the most optimal approach I found for most objectives. An easy go-to tactic was almost always to work my way inside of a base until I could find a choke point inside of a building or between a couple of structures. Then I would alert the guards and the rest of the enemies on the base would close in around me. And if you haven't noticed by the footage, enemies have pretty generous hitboxes for their heads, and with the way they are animated in areas like stairwells and tight corridors, by charging in either without their weapons raised or not shooting immediately upon seeing you, it becomes laughably easy to clear out an entire base by setting up and watching them funnel through areas like this. 
Similarly, another go-to tactic when it comes to stealth insertions creates another problem that voids creativity in your tactics. Since every gun can be fitted with a silencer by default, capping guards at a distance becomes a stale, cheap way of clearing a base undetected. If no funnel points can be reached, oftentimes I would go to a lookout or a tall building and would be able to clear out a single base with some effortless shooting. A larger base with more obstructions to sight lines usually just requires a combination of these two tactics. It's a shame because with the stealth being as stale as it is, you're often hardly resorting to one style of play and instead you're switching between overt and covert tactics at a way that feels like you're taking advantage of a broken system. And with the gunplay hardly being any more remarkable than the stealth, diminishing returns start to set in as you half-heartedly switch between these two modes of play. A huge area of this has to do with enemy interactivity, but we'll get to that in a bit. Because there's something else that stood out to me in this area. How the hell detection actually works. Now it's easy to tell what enemy sightlines are and if they're close to detecting you via a meter that fills up, but the variables on how quickly they see you or not aren't very clear at all. And this creates a lot of frustration, especially if you like playing with a stealth approach. This ties into another unique feature Breakpoint has, something called a proton camo, which mimics the octo camo found in Metal Gear Solid 4. By going prone and pressing the space bar, you're able to blend into whatever you're lying on, provided it's not man-made or something completely solid. With dirt, snow, and the floors of leafy jungles and forest, you are able to obscure yourself almost completely to the naked eye of your enemies. And to be honest, I like this type of thing. It's definitely neat to see Nomad cover himself up with dirt to avoid being spotted, but I find it works ridiculously too well sometimes. Enemies will be milliseconds away from spotting you, and just by pressing the space bar and throwing some dirt over your face, you practically become invisible to your AI opponent's eyes, unless they are standing right on top of you or see you while you do it. In Metal Gear Solid 4, mind you a linear stealth focus game, but a game that came out 11 years ago nonetheless, had a much more competent system for this that provided the player with important information, but was just as easy to execute. Where even with the ability to change your character's camouflage at any point in time, foliage, weather, lighting, and positioning would always affect your character's camouflage, and it was made precisely clear on a percentage gauge. In Breakpoint, it's very unclear if any of those things contribute to your visibility, and if they do, the game virtually gives you no indication. It seems the only things, which are the obvious ones, have any role in your detection, like how far away you are from an enemy that's looking at you, shooting without a suppressor or not, and if you are in prone camo or not. Now, not having stealth act as intended wouldn't necessarily ruin a game with satisfying gunplay and somewhat dynamic encounters, and these two areas are where the Ghost Recon IP has fared better than most consistently throughout the years. But in Breakpoint's case, its improved gunplay from Wildlands is still weighed down by the aforementioned aspects we've already gone over, not to mention character input, although an improvement over Wildlands, still being quite subpar. However, the rockier aspects of this still show when using vehicles that feel weightless and magnetic at the same time and when you try to navigate over Aurora's steeper train either on foot or in a vehicle. But the things that arguably carry Breakpoint's gameplay the most, the gunplay and combat, are both lackluster at best. Primarily due to the vanilla damage model, relentless speed and resilience of your character, and the unengaging enemies. Now, former Ghost Recon games emphasize lethality that applied to both you and the bad guys. Specifically prior to Future Soldier, bullets didn't discriminate, and a single shot was enough for you to be suddenly killed, incapacitated, or noticeably winded. We have a casualty. If you're hit and are lucky enough to shake it off, your screen will pulse and your character will likely lose most of the tiny bit of health they already have, with the ability to regenerate it back. This might sound frustrating to someone on the bandwagon of less punishing shooters, but the flip side of this was that enemies were just as vulnerable to damage as you are. Now, this created a lot of tension when bullets were flying around you and you had to move through openings and briefly expose yourself to enemies to have a chance at taking them on. Instead of a contemporary shooter where you can do a dance of using the most obvious sightline to your enemy, pick off a couple of targets and retreat back into cover to heal only to repeat the cycle, in prior Ghost Recons, using that direct approach usually spelled immediate failure for your character. The optimal approach tended to be breaking line of sight by moving through cover and flanking your enemy from a different angle ducking down and moving around on a death blade, or pushing up on a shanty building to come up on an enemy on the other side was usually the intended mode of play. Take into account your character's vulnerability, and this created a lot of tension, because it always felt at risk of going incredibly wrong, even if you wore being careful. 
A more head-on approach wouldn't offer the player with a stalemate they could just slog through, but rather create an obstacle by the enemy's fire superiority that forced the player into making choices. Because when a bullet hit the ground in front of you and a cloud of dust shot up, you felt the danger and would move back to consider different avenues to engage from. Breakpoint is void of any similar experiences, because the ground you stand on feels completely different than that of your enemies, even in the earliest part of the game where you are at your weakest. You're fast, agile, and accurate with the ability to completely change your tactics at the press of a few buttons, while your enemies stand out in the open unaware to their paths getting clipped only a few feet away from them. They predictably run to cover and a lot of the time charge right at you through open corridors instead of holding down choke points. Now, bullets do hurt you, but the difference here is you can afford to expose yourself to enemies for a few seconds, provided you can reach cover, then shake the damage off with a healing item. Even on extreme difficulty, they don't deter you in the same way as other games had, and enemies aren't nearly as cunning or precise to hold a serious threat individually, especially considering how much they like to circle around geometry and fail at committing to their advances by putting their back to you and running away halfway through their pushes. What makes this worse is enemies can't be suppressed and don't react to your gunfire unless it's fatal, resulting in gun battles turning into whoever can soak the other with more bullets the quickest. This is extremely disappointing and makes melee combat hardly viable unless you have enough health to soak up a few rounds or are undetected. What makes this more shocking is how enemies from 19 years ago had more interactivity when it came to this aspect. Even with the variety of enemy types from the laughably unmenacing juggernauts, tank and airborne drones, to the harder infantry types like the wolves, encounters lack a much needed variety due to this lack of interactivity. Juggernauts pose no more of a threat than regular enemies and can be taken out just as easy if not more with a couple of headshots. Drones, which come in several different forms, prove to be more of a challenge but not really a welcome one. Airborne drones can soak up some decent damage and do a good job of swiftly moving through the air to dodge your fire, but this proves to be more cheaply annoying as there's not really any other counter to this when you've been engaged other than twitching your mouse quicker than you usually do. This only leads to prioritizing them before you begin an engagement, and heavily armored drones only require more ordnance or an angle that you can take advantage of to chip away at their health. And wolves, well, wolves just do more damage than regular infantry types, but don't employ any more sophisticated tactics than their lessers. At least for me, my issues with Breakpoint aren't stem from it just being another Ubisoft open world game. Rather, it's entirely because it feels so out of place being a part of the Ghost Recon franchise that it arguably could have suited a different IP altogether. Fundamentally, with Ghost Recon attached to the title or not, the trio of its primary elements of accessible third-person shooting and sandbox gameplay designed for diverse tactical opportunities and the survival mechanics lack the sophistication and polish to stand out on their own or to even begin complementing one another. The design overall has so many aspects of it that become mute due to shortcuts that are made available to the player. It makes for a game that lacks verity outside its already tried and tested sandbox tropes and it extinguishes the charisma Breakpoint already has very little of. While the island of Aurora is technically ambitious, the legs of Breakpoint's gameplay are protruding and imbalanced, with its selling points that were displayed in the marketing taking a backseat for generic open world functionality, underwhelming combat, and a leveling system that belongs in a looter shooter. Although these implementations make more than a subtle reminder about how recycled Ubisoft's approach to these titles are, it doesn't change how disheartening Breakpoint's direction and quality is to me. As someone who always viewed Ghost Recon as a respectable franchise, it's hard to watch it continue to stray further away from its original identity, not just in terms of quality, but design. It's at the point now where it's unrecognizable to me, and it just downright sucks. So often do successful franchises squeeze their novelty dry to the point that they require a drastic reinventation to appear fresh to their audiences. Evolution, whether it be to draw more attention to a certain niche a game scratches so well, or to appease new fans and old of long-going series, is a natural thing to expect from any brand that isn't experiencing immediate success, especially one that has been ongoing as long as Ghost Recon. But whereas some games have been milked so much that the only thing that they can do is reinvent themselves title after title, and others donning almost completely new identities after so many years, was Ghost Recon ever really needing to be reinvented? I'm all for taking risks in any entertainment industry, with the caveat of how taking risks in itself doesn't necessarily make for great art, but with something already as polished as Ghost Recon once was in the 2000s, I wonder if focusing the series to be an open world tactical shooter was necessarily the right move. 
perhaps not so much from a critical standpoint, but more so a business one. In the instance of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the second strive to reinvent Ghost Recon as an open world series, it would seem completely logical after Wildland's success and Future Soldier's mixed reception. Although frustrating, it's understandable to me how the series ended up taking this direction. Before Ghost Recon's decline in 2012, the franchise was arguably at its peak with the Advanced Warfighter games. For the mid-2000s, they were obviously overshadowed by some bigger titles, but they still did very modest in terms of sales. It's just that it took only one game like Future Soldier to knock the series into a coma, only for it to have to wake up years later completely disconfigured. And I think there are various reasons that contribute to this. Future Soldier's lengthy development and lacking sales are among the most notable, but whether Future Soldier had done well or not, it would seem like the most natural progression for the series was to reboot in some form. Future Soldier, while a totally different experience that feels nothing like Advanced Warfighter, would still be viewed as a continuation of what Advanced Warfighter did. Both are third-person shooters with a very similar aesthetic and focus on infantry combat. So any successor to Future Soldier would likely be viewed through this lens unless something drastically changed. Although I would have been fine with Red Storm Interactive or Ubisoft Paris taking another shot at making a linear third-person shooter after Future Soldier post-2012, it probably wouldn't have gathered the same sort of appeal that Gra had in its heyday when it first appeared on 8th generation consoles. Thus, it's not hard to imagine why Ubisoft felt Ghost Recon needed to go open world. But now that we're two games into the strategy of theirs, it's clear to me that the attempt to make Ghost Recon an exciting sandbox shooter continues in the trend of Future Soldier of turning its back on prior Ghost Recon game strengths, as well as being far too ambiguous in how they adapt the tactical shooter into something new. And now that ambiguity has caused them a major blow, not only to their IP's image, but as a company altogether. Just like in 2012, Ubisoft will have to reassess Ghost Recon once more. So I'd like to raise the question. Why couldn't the core of what Advanced Warfighter, Ghost Recon 1 and 2 did, be reimagined, innovated upon, and modernized for today, instead of butchering the series even further? If you ask me, a modernized Ghost Recon game with Gra's weighty yet fluid gameplay qualities that thrived at making tense scenarios is long overdue. And with how successful Modern Warfare has been at rebooting Call of Duty by returning to fast kill times and grounded movement, I don't think that idea is too far-fetched. A modernized Gra experience that blended tense pacing with unforgiving third-person gunplay would ironically be a breath of fresh air at this point. It could return to an emphasis on multiplayer, which people forget was definitely one of Gra's strengths, with a combat model that suited both PvP and PvE modes, reinstitutionalizing one-shot kills, cross-com-like interfaces, open levels, and punishing enemies, all while being complemented by things people look for in a game like this, like personalized soldiers and customizable loadouts. Instead of this all-encompassing approach these open world games have when it comes to cooperative play, why not make it a slight bit more linear and rip a page straight out of Advanced Warfighter 1 and 2's playbook? If you hop on Grod 2 on Xbox 360 today, they're still playing co-op for a reason. If a modern Ghost Recon game could capture the magic of Gra's co-op, that would be something special. Cooperative modes in Gra had their quirks, but their strengths far overshadowed their shortcomings. And there was so much room to expand upon if the series had stayed true to Advanced Warfighter's excellent pacing in this regard. This is an area of Gra 2 that gave me a lot of fond memories that rival the ones I have from Halo 3 and Call of Duty growing up. From when the only access to the game I had was the Xbox Live demo with one available co-op mission, to way later in its lifespan when I would still play it occasionally after the game had lost much of its relevancy. Things like holding down the rooftop of Embassy and carefully plying corners and fighting through different sides of docks. There was just so much intensity to taking on huge missions with a group of friends that would go on up for an hour. And the payoff was a huge sense of achievement if you could survive to the end. Spectators wouldn't watch us pull clutches as they're called nowadays, okay boomer, but rather would witness epic standoffs that were far more reminiscent of the ferocious ending of We Were Soldiers. And that shit gave me PTSD, dog. Death was sudden and it made it all the more dramatic, especially when you got knocked down in the middle of a battle and were screaming for your 7th grade classmates to resuscitate you. Imagine all of that with the enhancements of today's game development tools. Current gen consoles need a game like this to get people back into game chat and to talk to each other. Crosscom could be built upon to make tactical team oriented gameplay more accessible like it once did in the past by giving players more situational awareness something that was very welcoming for people who hadn't played a tactical shooter before. Instead of everyone having some pocketable thing that they can toss up into the air at any point in time, Crosscom could link with drones that are more staged and specialized. 
perhaps a dedicated player role like an advisor or drone specialist on the ground can have special access to varying forms of drones to assist the main force. Aerial reconnaissance drones could be used to fly around the mission to take enemies, or vehicular drones could carry munitions to the front lines and be used as transport to get to an objective. While perhaps not the most original idea, I've yet to see something like this implemented in a shooter that wasn't bogged down by the complexities of a military simulation. Just at the very least, can we have character movement that isn't floaty, and enemies that can't be tricked into traps like they're Joe Pesci in Home Alone? Hello. So many of these ideas and qualities that were touched upon in older games make them infinitely more enjoyable to me than the previous three mainline games have, and they deserve to be revitalized and brought to the forefront of a future Ghost Recon experience. And with the way third person shooters have evolved today, we need one that recaptures the essence of a Ghost Recon game pre-2012. Pipe dreams aside, I'm actually relieved Breakpoint has disappointed. It's clear Ubisoft has acknowledged this and haven't been pleased with the reception. It seems their company and investors are taking it for what it should be, a wake-up call. In the future, I can only hope that they put this barren open-world approach behind them, forgetting about casting celebrities for characters that have unfulfilled arcs and leave systems that belong in other genres alone. Ghost Recon may have needed to evolve at some point, but what it had done prior to the start of the decade is what gave it its identity, not what has been tried in the last few years. I think it's about time that that identity was reclaimed and the special franchise gets realigned with its strengths that pushed it to become a blockbuster in the first place. Hey, thanks for watching. I'd just like to give a quick jolly thanks to everyone who helped me out while I was making this video. I don't have a huge long list of patrons or anything like that, but just the people I've been chatting with in other creators' discords have been hugely inspiring and encouraging. My personal situation hasn't been the most ideal the last couple months since I've been between a whole bunch of different jobs trying to make ends meet, but making this video has really helped me stay sane, and having people to talk with makes a huge difference. A lot of lessons were learned from the last analysis video I made like this, so I'd greatly appreciate hearing any advice or criticisms you might have had for this one. If you do have any, just leave a comment, and if you enjoyed the video, maybe consider subscribing or liking. Anyway, I'm looking forward to working on more projects like this in the new years, but until then, enjoy your holidays. Thanks again, you guys.